Now let's go ahead and trace our Fibonacci recursive functions with a stack frame. So I went ahead and created a stack frame for main and on line 20, main calls Fibonacci with an argument of five. And I'm just going to abbreviate Fibonacci for F. So F5. And whenever we call a function, an activation record is created. So on line 28, we enter the function. The compiler then checks the condition on line 31, whether data is equal to zero and one, and that condition is false. So the compiler jumps to line 37. And on line 37, our first recursive call is made. And that's with Fibonacci with a data minus two. So five minus two gives us F3. And anytime a function is called, an activation record is created, F3. The compiler then jumps to line 28 and enters the function. The condition on line 31 is checked and is three equal to zero or one. That condition is false. So the compiler jumps to line 37. And again, a recursive function call is made. Three minus two is one. And so our compiler calls F1. And every time a function call is created, an activation record is made. F1 is called. The compiler goes to line 28 and enters the function and jumps to line 31. Is data equal zero or equal one? Does one equal zero or does one equal one? That condition is true. And so that data is returned. So one is returned. F1 is popped off the stack frame and F1 is one. And so the control goes back to F3 and F3 resumes on line 37 where another recursive call is made. Fibonacci data minus one. And so data minus one, three minus one is F2. And again, every time a recursive function is called, an activation record is created for F2. So the compiler goes to line 28 and enters the function. On line 31, it checks the condition. Is two equal zero or one? No. So that condition is false. So the compiler jumps to line 37. And on line 37, the first recursive function is called Fibonacci data minus two. And so this becomes F. So two minus two is zero. And every time a function call is made, a stack frame is created. The compiler then jumps to line 28 and on line 31 it checks the data is zero equals zero. That is true. And so it returns zero. So F0 is popped off the stack frame and F0 returns zero. The control then goes back to F2 and F2 resumes on line 37 where a recursive function is called two minus one. Well, that gives us F1. Again, every time a recursive function is called, an activation record is created. So F1 is created on the stack frame. The compiler enters the function on line 28 and checks the condition on line 31 is one equal one. The answer is yes. So one is returned and F1 is popped off the stack frame. The control then goes back to F2 where zero plus one is returned because after line 37, there's nothing left to do. And so it returns zero plus one, which is one. So F2 is one. And so F2 is popped off the stack frame. The control goes back to F3. F3 resumes on line 37, there's nothing left to do. So line 37 is added. One plus one is two. So F3 returns two. F3 is then popped off the stack frame and the control goes back to F5. F5 assumes on line 37 where the second Fibonacci recursive call is made. And so data minus one, five minus one is F4. So F5 calls F4. An activation record is created for F4 and the compiler enters the function on line 28. It jumps to line 31 and it checks the condition. Does four equal zero or one? That statement is false. The compiler jumps to line 37 where the first Fibonacci recursive call is made. So four minus two is F2. So it calls F2. An activation record is created for F2. Again, the compiler enters the function on line 28, jumps to line 31 and checks whether two is equal to zero or one. That condition is false. 
And so it jumps to line 37 where a recursive function is called. So 2 minus 2 is F0. So an activation record is created for F0. The compiler jumps to line 28 to enter the function. And on line 31, it checks as 0 equals 0. That condition is true. And so it returns the data, which is 0. F0 returns F0, and F0 is popped off the stack frame. The control then jumps back to F2, and F2 resumes on line 37, where the second recursive call is made. And in this case, 2 minus 1 is 1, so F of 1 is called. An activation record is created for F of 1, and the compiler jumps to line 28 to enter the function. It then jumps to line 31 to check the condition of is 1 equal to 0 or 1. That condition is true. So 1, F of 1 returns 1. F1 is then popped off the stack frame. The control returns to F2. F2 resumes on line 37 and there's nothing left to do. So F2 returns 0 plus 1, which is 1. So F2 returns 1. F2 is then popped off the stack frame. The control then returns to F4. F4 resumes on line 37, where the second Fibonacci recursive call is made. 4 minus 1 is 3, so F3 is called. An activation record is created for F3. The compiler jumps to line 28 to enter the function, and on line 31 it checks. Is 3 equal to 0 or 1? That condition is false. The compiler then jumps to line 37 where the first recursive function is called. 3 minus 2 is 1. So f of 1 is called. An activation record is created for f of 1. The compiler enters line 28 again and jumps to line 31. Is 1 equal to 0 or 1? That condition is true. So f1 returns 1. f1 is then popped off the stack frame. The control then goes back to f3. F3 resumes on line 37, where we have 3 minus 1. The second recursive call is made. 3 minus 1 is 2. So F2 is called. An activation record is created for F of 2. The compiler enters line 28, where it jumps to line 31 to check whether or not 2 is equal to 0 or 1. That condition is false. And so F2 makes its first recursive call when the compiler jumps to line 37. 2 minus 2 is 0. So F2 calls F of 0. An activation record is created for F of 0. The compiler then jumps to line 28 to enter the function. It then jumps to line 31 to check the condition. Is 0 equal to 0? That is a true condition, and so it returns 0. So F of 0 is popped off the stack frame. The control then goes back to F2. F2 resumes on line 37, and on line 37 it enters the second recursive call 2 minus 1. So f of 1 is called. An activation record is created for f of 1. The compiler then jumps to line 28 and jumps to line 31 to check the condition. Is 1 equal 0 or does 1 equal 1? The answer is yes. And so it returns that data which is 1. f1 is then popped off the stack frame. The control goes back to f2. F2 resumes on line 37, and after line 37, there is nothing left to do, and so it returns 0 plus 1, which is 1. So F2 is 1. F2 is then popped off the stack frame. The control then resumes to F3, or goes back to F3. F3 resumes on line 37, and there is nothing left to do. So it returns 1 plus 1, which is 2. F3 is then popped off the stack frame. The control then goes back to F4. F4 resumes on line 37, and after line 37, there's nothing left to do, and so it returns 1 plus 2, which is 3. F4 is then popped off the stack frame, and the control returns to F5. F5 then goes to line 37, and on line 37, there's nothing left to do, and so it adds 2 plus 3, and it returns 5. F5 is then popped off the stack frame, and the control goes back to main. And if we compile our program, there it is, we get 5. And so our output is 5, and this sums up our stack frame trace for our Fibonacci function. On our next video, we're going to trace this function using a tree.
Thank you for watching.